Okay, we're going to continue on with the uh, wall construction, but before we get too far with our walls, I'm going to change from a generic to a specific wall type. If you look at the generic wall type, just a reminder, we'll go back and edit it under structure it had just one thing. It was a structure, a six inch undefined category with the core boundary on each side. A little background music for us. So I'm going to change that. I would like to use a more detailed wall. So if I highlight any wall on here, right click and say select all instances, I can say pick all this particular wall type or I item visible in this view or in the entire project. Now I know I've only got these four so I can say in this view so it picks all four and I can swap those out for something else. So I'm going to go with something they've pre-built their exterior wall. Uh, I'm going to go with the wood siding. Exterior wood siding on wood stud. So that updated everything. Now this is where our core boundaries are really important. So I don't know what they had defined as their core boundary, but let's just dimension this thing the way we know it should be dimensioned. And that was from, I'm just, I'm going to my dimension tool, which is under annotate. I've right clicked and added this to my toolbar so I can get it from any, any tab. And I wanna really, I would like to dimension from outside face of sheathing that's where uh, what's going to line up with my foundation wall eventually and I'm just using my tab button to flick between the available spots so I go near where I want to be and you can see I can flip between different things that's where I want to be now if you look here do you remember our wall was 25 feet long and now it's 25 foot one so let's figure this out something must be out on the core boundaries so I'm going to highlight uh, the exterior wall and go edit type and pick structure. Now if you look here, they've got their uh, studs bound by the core boundary. So that means that when they dimensioned, they wanted you to dimension to the face of the stud. But I know the way I want to detail and build my house, I want the face of the plywood sheathing or OSB to be in line with the foundation. So I'm gonna take this plywood sheathing and I'm gonna move it down one step, so now it's inside the core boundary because that controls what we're dimensioning to. So this is considered my structure now. I've brought the sheathing in. Watch what happens to the dimension on this. Oh, it's going to delete the dimension. You'll see that. That's okay. It says can't do this. The dimension has become invalid. Fine. Let's go back to the drawing and look at it. Let's redimension that now. And I'm going to go from exterior face of sheathing again to exterior face of sheathing. And look at it now. It's at 25 feet. And that's because our generic wall that we put in had a core boundary that we were controlling to 25 feet. The new wall that we put in, their core boundary was to the face of the stud. And you can build like that. You can have the stud in line with the foundation. But as you saw in previous semesters with me, that that means you have to put a piece of sheathing over the wall, a floor structure. And I prefer to have the exterior face of sheathing in line with the foundation. So just by updating and being consistent with core boundaries, we can get the numbers to stay the same whether we change 15 different wall types. So that's a really important part that we need to be aware of is core boundary. So I've got a generic or a, one of their pre-made walls now that let's go back and look at it again. It's got, it's really well defined. It's got a siding exterior finish of three quarter inch, then an air barrier, then our core boundary, which is just defining the structure, then our sheathing, they've got half inch plywood, it could be OSB, then uh, five and a half inch, which is a two by six stud, then our vapor barrier, and notice the vapor barrier and the gypsum board are outside the inner core boundary. The core boundary defines the main structure. 
So finishes go outside of both of those. So this is a really good wall now that we've adjusted to bring our sheathing within the core boundary. So I'm going to say OK to that. But maybe before that, let's look at creating another wall. So I say OK to that and OK. I've got this wall highlighted. Let's make a similar wall. Now that we're happy with that wall type, let's make one that has a stucco finish. So I'm going to stay on this wall type and pick Edit Type. But this time, I'm going to duplicate. I'll turn that down a bit. And so now I'm going to say Duplicate, because I don't want to change this. This is a good one. But I'm just going to duplicate, and this one will be Instead of wood siding, it will just be stucco. Stuck. Whoops. Oh, I always get my caps mixed up. It's a common problem for me. Stucco on wood stud. We don't need number two because it added that just to make sure it was different. Stucco on wood stud. Okay. And now we're going to edit. And we're going to keep this three quarter inch finish is fine. It just allows us to have. Uh, something visible for an exterior finish. So I'm going to leave it at 3 quarter inch, but we're just going to change the category. <clears throat> okay, so we would like, I'm just going to go up and search stucco. See if we can find any stucco. None. Find something that will fit for it. Steel, stainless. Now, since I couldn't find stucco in my list, I'm going to show you how to create a new material. Uh, find something that is close to what you want it to be. So, what I was going through this list, I saw a gypsum board. Gypsum wall board has a dot hatch, which is just the sand pattern, which is what I want my stucco to read like. So I'm going to highlight gypsum wall board and then right click and say duplicate. So now it's got gypsum wall board one, and I'm going to override that and just call it stucco and hit enter. And now it'll jump down because it's all alph alphabetized. So now it's stucco with the same characteristics as uh, gypsum wallboard had. Gypsum wallboard is still here untouched, but now we've got a stucco as a choice with the uh, proper characteristics. So I'm going to say OK to that. So now I've got finish uh, here, stucco that we're going to show at 3 quarters of an inch thick. Everything else is the same, and we say OK to that. And if you zoom in to here, you can see the dot hatch. So it changed from the wood siding to the dot hatch. So say OK. Now, um, I may have only done that to this one wall. So what I'm going to do is select this wall, right click, and say select all instances. So notice that only three of them are still the wood siding one. And now I'm going to go to my drop down. Instead of uh, wood, there should be one that says stucco now. Uh, where is it? stucco on wood stud. This is the one we just created. So now they're all uh, stucco. And if we go back to our three, 3D view, that's it. It looks like that. And back to the main floor. Now one more thing I would like to do on this video is show you how to um, adjust the wall types for having the exterior finish work separately from the uh, interior uh, from the rest of the wall so that you can cover the floor system with the exterior finish as you would in real construction so I'll just edit type and go edit the structure and zoom in here what I want to do is I just want to have the ability to drag the stucco down over top of the floor structure without dragging the whole wall through so all we do is go into modify. We have to be in the section view. If you're in the plan view, it grays out. You can't edit this. So go section view, zoom into the bottom of the wall. I have another video on how to do this in more detail. Modify, and we're just going to click the bottom of the stucco and un 
lock that and say OK. So that now uh, when we work on a, our building we can drag the stucco below the exterior uh, floor finish. And I'm going to do the same to the uh, wood wall that we just did, that wood siding wall. Same exact thing. Go in, edit, section, zoom in, modify, take the bottom of the siding and unlock it from the rest of the assembly. And that's it.